Welcome to OnlineG3.com. Here's a sneak peek at our classroom environment. Students log in to this page, our course management system, and you'll see the logged in student up here in the top right corner. Uh, the drop down list there shows My Home, where students can access their classes, as well as an area to edit their profile, view messages from instructors, uh, check on their badges, or log out. The home page here shows important announcements as well as a calendar of important dates, uh, orientation information that's coming up, and access to social forums and portfolios. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dystopian literature class from last fall. Here you can see the students have some important information up at the top, such as a news forum, required books and materials, a help forum where they can ask for help from their teacher and classmates, as well as a contact your teacher form where students can ask a question and be assured of getting directly to the teacher. On the right here, you can see our level up box. Uh, this is the way that the students can see how much they've been working in the class, how much time they've put in and level up through the program. This is a way to motivate students without providing grades. You can also see latest badges for this particular class over here on the right. Uh, we try to keep those fun and motivational. And then in the center, you'll see the actual coursework that the students are doing. So in this class, there are a few assignments to complete before the first webinar, but let's scroll down and look at one of the later weeks here. Let's take a look at this week's assignments from the novel 1984. The very first thing for the week is a live webinar. Students can click on that link to attend the live webinar on a computer or a mobile device such as iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Uh, below that, a few hours after the class, a recorded webinar link will appear. So students who have to miss class for some reason are still able to keep up. Below that, we have assignments for the students to work on after their class webinars. Uh, there might be some resources related to the reading. There's usually an assignment from the book that we're working on. Perhaps some videos or some audio clips that will help to expand the student's thinking. Uh, and then sometimes there may be some quizzes for self-assessment and self-check to see if the students understand what they're learning. And then there's usually some kind of small writing assignment or creative activity to let the students work through the material that they're learning. Uh, in this example, we have a forum where the students are doing a creative bit of writing as a response to 1984. Uh, this is writing, what if there were a sequel to 1984? what might happen. So students here have written their thoughts and their fellow students can come in and respond to those thoughts and create a conversation. They can also give ratings uh, such as hearts or smiley faces to encourage their fellow classmates. Here we're taking a page out of social media and giving the students a way to respond that they're already familiar with. Uh, as you can see, there are little check boxes on the right here, and students can manually check off some of the items that they've done offline, such as readings. Other responses will be marked automatically as they complete their work. If a student completes the entire week's worth of work, they'll see a completion icon at the end of the week, letting them know that they have completed everything for that week. Now let's take a look at a few samples of webinars from various classes. But before we jump into uh, the fact or fiction of John Smith's accounts about Pocahontas, how many of you have seen Disney's Pocahontas? Uh, give me clappy hands in chat if you have seen Disney's Pocahontas. All right, lots of you have. All right, those of you who have seen this movie, is it even close to reality at all? It's so inaccurate. I think you guys are on the right track there. So, and also let me ask you guys this question. Is this a primary source? Not even in the slightest, right? It's a secondary source. It doesn't seem to be particularly well-founded on any actual um, document documentation about what happened here. So we shouldn't take it, should we take it seriously at all? Disney's Pocahontas? No, not at all. Cool. All right. Well, let's look at some sources that we are, we should maybe think about how we take, how seriously we take it. And I um, want to bring prop back onto the table here for this particular class. Um, who remembers what the first P stands for? Go ahead. What's the first P stand for? Primary versus secondary. That is absolutely correct. And what does R stand for? Let's start with some claims on um, early earth and plate tectonics and see what you guys have really absorbed. Um, so, 
Uh, raise your hands to share your thoughts if you want to. Um, you can also use yes if you think it's true, um, no if you think it's false, and use clappy hands if you think that it needs more information. And if you, and again, if you want to share your thoughts, raise your hand on each of these. So the first one is about 99% of the matter in any star forming glass cloud ends up in a star and only about 1% is left over for planet formation. Do you guys think this is true? Do you think it's false? Or do you think it needs more info? Um, and let's see, did we get any hands out of this? This is sort of um, this is the sort of thing where you have to think about significant figures. I mean, to what degree of precision do we really um, know any of these numbers? And even if we are totally wrong about any, any one of these various quantities that we've listed for, for example, the age of the universe, age of the solar system, the time periods of certain eras that we've uh, looked back through. Um, to what degree of precision do we want to express them? Because if we say that the universe is exactly, what number out there, 4.56829 billion years old, um, could, is it even even if you have good reason to believe that's an, that's an accurate measurement, are you really going to express something with that degree of uncertainty to that degree of precision? Absolutely, I totally agree with you. That is a, a fantastic point. What is the positive phrase in here? Good. One of the cynic philosophers. Fantastic. Yes. Where's our matching noun? We always have to have a matching noun and an positive phrase. Diogenes. Yeah. What is Diogenes equal to? What's a matching noun? Philosophers. Good thought, but it's actually one. Yeah. And why? Why is it just one? What's the rest of that phrase? Of the cynic philosophers is a prepositional phrase. We've got a phrase within a phrase here. It's phraseception. All right, so let me get a different color here. And let's highlight of the cynic philosophers. Yeah, there's another phrase. So what we really have here is a prepositional phrase embedded within an appositive phrase. Um, so the matching noun is one. Diogenes is one. And then of the cynic philosophers is actually describing the one. What kind of one? Yeah, good. Thanks for visiting us at OnlineG3.com. If you have any questions, please check out our website or send us an email at info at OnlineG3.com.